hello welcome back to another video i know it's maybe been a little bit of time but let's talk about all the books that i want to read this fall my goodness where have i been just you know drinking my donkeys living life uh but for real i got married end of august and that pretty much took up my entire brain for the better part of 2024. So now that that's over, I'm very happy. It was beautiful. It was magical. I have some pictures on my Instagram if you want to see. Most amazing day of my life, but it was a lot of stress leading up to it and I just couldn't balance everything. I'm actually in the middle of filming a reading vlog where I'm going to go more into talking like where I've been, what I'm feeling with my reading, blah, 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 blah. If you want to hear me yap about all of that, stay tuned. But today's video is really focusing on what I want to read this fall. If you've been around my channel for a while, I used to post monthly TBRs. Stuck to them about maybe like 50, 30 to 50 percent I would say was the rate of which I actually read the books off of my TBR. It's the eternal reader struggle. So I was really just having a hard time sticking to them so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna stop making TBRs. And I felt like I was only making them to have content to make and not because I actually was finding them helpful. So for the majority of this year, I've not had a TBR. I've just been free-flowing with my books. I'm now getting to a point though where I do think a TBR helps to give some structure and some goals and helps me pick out the books that I really want to be reading. And without it, I don't know, I just haven't been feeling as satisfied with my reading. I will go into more detail in my vlog just talking about my life, but today is really just a focus on the books. I think a seasonal TBR is going to help me organize just like the top books that I want to really be reading in the season. So I'm going to hopefully do fall, winter, spring, summer TBR. I think that will be good. And my goal with this is if I'm sitting a TBR for like three-ish months and it's less books than I would read in three months then it also gives me some wiggle room but it's really helping me prioritize the books that I want to read in season because there are so many books that I'm like oh my god this is a perfect book for fall perfect book for winter perfect book for spring and then it gets to that season and then I don't pick it up because I don't prioritize it so this is really just helping me think through what I really want to be reading each season and fall I mean fall is like the best time for reading I feel like there's so many spooky stories so many just like I love horror I love thrillers like I just love the fall season and all like gothic reads like perfect for fall I went to Greece on my honeymoon and I just got back and like it was like immediate fall because I kind of was away in those like two last weeks of when summer's really trying to hold on and oh my god it's been so beautiful the leaves are turning and like ah, i'm just living my best new england fall life i went through my bookshelves and i said what are the books that i tell myself every fall that i'm going to read and then i never read them and i picked out a decent chunk i would be happy if i get through at least a few of them this again is just a tool to help me one read through all the books that i own because it's really just getting to the point of excessiveness now and I need to read what I already own. Two, I just love fall books and I'm excited to talk about them with you. And yeah, for more of my rambling thoughts, check out my reading blog. It should be posted soon. I don't know if I'm going to stick to a schedule now that I'm making booktube videos again because that is stressful to me and this is really just a hobby. But whenever I have a book video to post, I'll post it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Pretty much, I'm just going to talk about these books in a random order. I just kind of pulled them off of my shelves. <laughs> I think this is the book that I'm going to start today when I finish my current read, which is Us in Ruins by Rachel Moore. It's not on the fall TBR because it's not specifically fall, but so cute, so fun. Perfect for just coming back from a vacation where I was exploring archaeological ruins. It just, you really have the ruins fresh in your mind. Anyways, this series, Belladonna, is literally one of my favorite series of all time um these are my like favorite author shelves at least right here that i have displayed behind me i have adeline grace carrie maniscalco margaret rogerson rebecca ross and trisha levenzeller these are like my ya uh, fantasy authors that i love i mean obviously i have more favorite authors um i have stephanie garber over here where you can't see sandra claire sarah j mass but 
don't know, these are just the books that I think are like the prettiest and that are my personal favorites and I love having them in the background of my videos. But I have more that I love. Anyways, it is time for the concluding book in the Belladonna trilogy. When I first read Belladonna two years ago now, it took me by surprise, took me by storm, gripped me and did not let me go. Um, we are following Signa Farrow who basically can see and communicate with death and wherever she goes death follows so she gets kind of transported between different guardians and this is a regency-esque setting until finally she comes to Thorngrove Manor to live with the Hawthorns and this family has got problems. The mother recently passed away and now Signa can see her ghost and her ghost is like I need you to figure out who killed me. The father is just unwell, can't deal with the death of his wife, like throwing parties to try and bury his grief. Their daughter is really sick with like a similar sickness that the mother perished from and then the son is just like trying to hold the family together. So Signa kind of gets thrown into this mix and she again has to investigate the, mu the murder of the mother and she can communicate with death so it's like a mystery fantasy romance and the writing is just so gorgeous. It's flowery in the way that I really like but still accessible to obviously a little bit of a younger audience because this is YA and I just everything was just so beautiful and I loved it. Also I'm fighting a bit of a cold which is why I sound stuffy so apologies. Anyways then last year I read the sequel Foxglove. I still think Belladonna is my favorite in the series but I still really love this beautiful writing. Um, what's interesting is that I would say like the first book focuses on Signa and death and then this book brings Signa's cousin Blythe into the mix with another character and it's kind of like all four of their stories interweaving and then this book like this is Blythe on the cover I think is specifically going to focus on Blythe's story so it's a very interesting structure for a trilogy in the way that it shifts focus to different characters because not all three books were about Signa and death and this middle one was almost like a transition book. I love the writing, the setting, everything. It's just gorgeous so I absolutely cannot wait to read this. Like there is a lot of like fun like balls in the last one and this character that uh, Blythe is going to be dealing with is different than death and like a little bit more slippery than death I want to say. He kind of gives um, Jax from once upon a broken heart like that kind of character who is kind of like sly and cunning but you still kind of love um and then also like let's just look and i love that each book is named after a poison flower so this one's wisteria and it said it's said that wisteria vine is a symbol of immortality and then the end pages are so pretty like look at that illustration style i just love pretty books let me down in the back and then it's up in the back. So, very exciting stuff here. Hopefully I will be digging my teeth into this one today because I can't wait. Alright, so I wasn't sure which book by this author I was going to put on this TBR, but I read A Study in Drowning last year. Here we have the book, A Study in Drowning. I literally think about this book all the time. It might be one of my favorite books ever because it just was everything. It's just a book that really, really makes you think. And analyze the text and I think Ava Reed is like a really smart writer and is doing like really really cool stuff with her books. So I love this. The collector's edition is coming out soon. So gorgeous. I of course pre-ordered a copy because I'm going to support Ava Reed forever. Earlier in the year I started one of her other books and put it down halfway through and that is Juniper and Thorn and it really was not the book. It was me. I was just having a lot of problems having enough focus to stick to reading a physical book and that problem has pretty much continued forward until literally after the wedding and that's why I'm also like setting myself a TBR with just physical books because I'm really just trying to shift back into reading all of my books that I own and uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'm probably going to restart this one because it's been too long now. Um, but this one is a horror book and I love horror books and it was definitely like has content warnings for eating disorders and like body horror and like it's just very compelling. Um, so it's a 
retelling of the juniper tree which is a Grimm's brother fairy tale which I actually wrote an essay on in college because I took one of my writing courses about fairy tales really cool course and also now that I am reading so many fairy tale retellings just in YA and fantasy at the moment I feel like it's come in handy so we basically have Marlinchen who lives with her two sisters in this I got the feeling that it was like a Russian inspired city and their father is a wizard but the city is also kind of like in the middle of an industrial revolution so people are forgetting about magic and more so going towards industry they are the last true witches in the city and i think their like father's business is kind of suffering because people are not really looking to magic anymore and their father like keeps them sequestered and away he doesn't really want them out in the city but her and her sisters sneak out at night to experience like what it's actually like to be out in this uh city and there is also a monster about so uh, when i read this book i mean it was really compelling and it just had so many beautiful lines of writing like okay i just flipped to a random page and i had underlined if there was power in keeping a secret surely there was power in revealing it too and just ugh, so much beautiful and i really just i really gotta keep reading it because i think i stopped it before it really got juicy so this is a book that I've owned for a couple of years now. I think I bought it the year it came out. Let's see what year it was published. Twenty twenty two. So yeah, I've owned this book for two years, and every year I'm like, I'm gonna read this in fall. I haven't done it yet, so let's hopefully uh, stick to it this year. And this is by Alexis Henderson, who also wrote Year of the Witchling, and she just had an Academy for Liars come out, which is like a dark academia. So if I like this book, definitely will be interested in picking that one up. But I gotta read this one first because I already own it and have owned it for two years. Um, this is Vampires. And we're following Marion Shaw, who has been raised in the slums. And then she kind of gets picked to go be a blood maiden at the House of Hunger, a um, upper echelon of society vampire house. And so she kind of has this romance with the lady of that house and it becomes a game of cat and mouse so it's like haunted house vampires everything and i've heard it's very very good speaking of vampires we have love it never what why did i call love never dies love never dies is the tagline on top but i have the scarlet veil by shelby Marin. 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 um this is a spin-off of Serpent and Dove, which I read this trilogy, loved it. The second book in that trilogy hurt my feelings. Anyways, we have this spinoff, and now we are following Celie, who was one of the side characters in the original trilogy. She becomes actually the first Chasaur woman. Now, like after the conflict of the original trilogy, there is a new evil rising, and I think she gets camp captured by a vampire. And she's supposed to be like a huntswoman vampire hunter. So this series is really fun. It's still YA, but it has a little bit more of that new adult feeling. And I adored the original trilogy and I really, really want to continue on with the series. This is actually surprisingly might be the only spicy, like truly spicy adult fantasy romance book on this list. Who is she? I don't know. Phantasma by Kaylee Smith. Somebody told me that this was inspired by Danny Phantom who was my first cartoon crush and I said add to cart <laughs> like immediate no no second thoughts so what is it it's a game so it also kind of gives like carnival feelings let's see yeah like this almost is very carnival-esque so um it's a game with like different levels and the winner of the competition is granted a wish and Tasma is in a cursed manner and obviously a handsome stranger says that he can help her can he? I don't know. So I think it has ghosts, a competition in like a haunted house, and it's spicy. So that sounds absolutely perfect for spooky season. Next we have Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. I read The Hacienda by her last year. Look at how color coordinated my tabs are. An amazing haunted house story and I really really love her writing. So I'm so excited to pick this one up. Um, this takes place, I want to say, on the Texas-Mexico border in the supernatural western 
um, so 1840s. Nina and Nestor were childhood friends and then they are attacked by monsters and Nestor thinks that Nina has died and so he kind of runs away and continues on with his life and then years later they're reunited and there are scary vampires and I think these vampires are truly like not romanticized like they are the enemy of this couple so I mean I always love new vampires and now we have vampires in different cultures and you know just a twist on vampires they're just a good creature to have books about and to read about especially in the fall next is the familiar by Lee Bardugo uh, I picked this one up because I love Lee Bardugo. I really need to get back to her Ninth House series, but in the meantime, this is a standalone. So I think it could be easier to pick up in the fall where I'm really just trying to get through. Actually, a, a decent amount of these books are standalones. So this is set in the Inquisition in Spain in the 1500s, which is a setting that I do not think I've read a book from before. And we're following Louisa, who is a scullion maid and basically the family discovers that she has this magic that can allow her to perform little miracles and then they force her to use that magic to further the standing of this family and then she kind of attracts the notice of somebody that's trying to win back the favor of the king and i think she gets embroiled in the court life and the magic there i mean it's lee bardugo she has gorgeous writing and i really like her books and this is obviously something very different in tone and just the kind of story from her and I've heard nothing but honestly like really great things so and it just seems like a good book to read in the fall I mean look at that cover next is A Dowry in Blood by S.T. Gibson I feel like this is a pretty popular book on here oh I didn't realize it has like an inscription in the cover it was independently published and then it got picked up by a traditional publisher and now this author has a few other books out but I definitely want to start with her first book that really launched her into popularity um, and this is told from the perspective of one of Dracula's brides and sh she's like writing a letter to Dracula so there's a lot of like you in the prose which is an interesting kind of tense that I have not read a lot from and apparently it also uh, has a polyamorous relationship and also just talks a lot about like the abuse that I think Dracula's wives went through. Okay. This book is so pretty. We have The Thirteenth Child by Erin A. Craig. I love Erin A. Craig. I, oh, okay, this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. It has this shiny foiling and the gold edges. I read um, her book last year, House of Roots and Ruin, which was a spinoff of House of Salt and Sorrows. That ending was a little bit unclear, so I don't know if we're getting another book in the world. But regardless, this is a new book. And I'm pretty sure when this cover was revealed, I was floored because like the candles, the stairs, like everything about this is autumn. Everything about this is spooky season. Everything about this is gothic. And I love it. And we're following Hazel. So Hazel is the 13th child. So she has been promised to the god of death. And he basically has planned for Hazel to become a great and celebrated healer. And he gives her the gift to know exactly the cure for any ailment. However, obviously there's always a but with gods. She can see when death has claimed a patient and basically has to kill that patient for death. And then she ends up in the royal court and she has to grapple with should she save the life of a king that is destined to die. I mean, ugh. I love her writing so much. I mean, her books are just... I really like when horror is mixed in with fantasy in a YA setting and I feel like Erin A. Craig does that mixture very very well. There's not too many books in that very like niche meeting of all of these different things that I have said but if you know of any please 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 let me know because I love fantasy horror with a bit of romance. Next is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I actually went to a book signing for this last year. I never read it because I suck. So yeah, it's signed to me and I actually loved hearing Alex talk about like her writing process and what inspired her to write this book and it just seems really cool. It's one of those books where like the house has a personality almost um, and she's just someone that I feel like is very smart with her writing and I really want to dive more into her works. Opal lives in this kind of like rural Kentucky mining town 
and in their town there is this house that a famous author lived in like a hundred years ago and it's very like elusive like you can't really see from the street and she gets hired to work in that house with the like grandson of the author named Arthur and there are sinister forces in the house. What I find really interesting when I went to the signing, which I need to start going to book signings again, that's something that I kind of have fallen off of doing and I need to get back to that. I actually got tickets to go see Saba Tahir uh, next week. I think I'll I'm so excited. I'm so excited. What what really struck me about the conversation is she was talking about how like everyone in books is always hot and so she like purposely made characters that are like not supposed to be like attractive like they're just supposed to not like ugly but they're just supposed to be like regular people which I find really funny because like definitely in books like obviously you're romanticizing life to a certain degree so everyone's hot but I, I kind of appreciate that so I thought that was a fun little tidbit I took away from the signing and yeah I mean it's just beautiful. I need to read it. Another book that has been haunting me for like a couple years now and I actually just bought it because I'm like I'm so sick of thinking that I want to read this book and that I'm not reading it. And that is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chokshi. I knew from the first second I saw this cover that this book was going to be for me which is very interesting because I read um her what was it Gilded Wolves series a couple years ago and famously did not like it in a time where everyone else was liking it and the complaint with that series is always that it's too similar to Six of Crows. That was not my complaint. My complaint was that I could see what she was trying to do with the magic system in making it like science but the science was just not good enough for me as a scientist. So that was like a personal ick that really took me out of the story because it wasn't it was trying to be a magic that was science-based, but the science was not based in real science, and but it was like close enough to the real science that I could see like where she took liberties and it just didn't work in my brain because I am literally a scientist. So my problems with that book are more so like personal problems. Anyways, back to this book. So we have this couple that just got married and the wife, Indigo, tells her husband basically you know, I, I will marry you, but you cannot ask me anything about my past. So obviously, like, what happened in her past? And they return to her childhood home called the House of Dreams, which great name for a house. And so I think <laughs> you're in her childhood home. You're not supposed to pry into her past, but obviously things start happening. So, and I've just heard the writing in this is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I need like a horror gorgeous book. And then the last book on the TBR, which now I'm like looking around my bookshelves and there's like more books that I could put on this TBR, but I feel like this is enough, especially because I'm posting it kind of later in the fall because I was traveling. So anyways, um, and this is a book I recently bought, but I have had my eye on for literal months, but I just wasn't in the headspace to be reading these kinds of books. And this is Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. Pornak, and I want to say it's Polish folklore inspired. And the tagline is, what dark secrets lie hidden in the spirit wood. Ooh. And I mean, I just love when the back cover just has this like very beautiful illustration style. Like this book is so pretty. And I also feel like it's going to hit that mixture of fantasy, romance, and horror that I love. I love I eat it up every time I love it so so much so Liska knows that magic is dangerous and so she flees her small village to go into the spirit wood to pluck this fern that grants a wish and she wishes to be rid of her powers however she is caught by the demon ward of the wood called the Lesky I'm assuming it's that hot guy on the cover with the antlers <laughs> so she has to basically make a bargain with him and she exchanges one year of servitude to finally have the flowers wish and she gets whisked away to the Lesky's manor and she finds out that she is not the first person to make this dangerous bargain. I mean, it sounds like fairy tale esque It sounds just gorgeous. I mean, like, even look at her dress on the cover. It's so pretty. It's so pretty and I love it. And yeah, I just feel like this is going to be a favorite book for me. And you know just when you like start thinking about a certain book like over and over again and it's just like calling to you like that's how I feel about this book. So anyways that has been my fall TBR. I'm actually so happy to be filming again for booktube. I really have missed it and I really just, just feel happy. I feel like this is like my happy space and what I really enjoy making content for and I just feel 
really good and really settled after all of the craziness of the past year and I feel ready to start making content again and this was just really fun and I really think it's going to help me stick to my reading goals because I have not been doing very well with them. So, but anyways, I'm going to have again more of a discussion about where I've been at in my reading and like what I've been feeling in my vlog that I'm about to start filming. Keep an eye out for that. Have a little fall leaf emoji if you have watched this far and enjoyed this video and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.